Welcome to this Inova Systems webinar on in-context assembly modelling. If we jump back into SOLIDWORKS, we see we've got a cabinet. Now what I'm going to be doing in this webinar is showing how to design this cabinet in context so that all of the parts uh, grow and uh, change size and shape based on some very simple uh, changes to mates and uh, sketch geometry. So I'm just going to jump into my other model. You see here I've got a single side panel of my cabinet and it is positioned a certain distance away from the origin and this is going to be one of my controlling mates. So first of all I'm going to mirror my side panel. And then I'm going to insert a new component. Now instead of inserting a component that already exists, I'm going to create a brand new part within inside this assembly. So first of all, you select the option and it gives you a green tick next to the mouse. Well now what this is doing is asking you to select a face on which to create your component. I'm going to select this slither face here. It then mates the component to that face and positions the origin on it. And then if I just do quickly sketch a rectangle, so we're going to go from that inside edge to that inside edge. Now we're just going to quickly dimension it into place. And we want to extrude this. And we're going to go to this face at the back. So we very quickly created the first component. Now I want another one of these shelves. And we'll just make this into position. So there we go, we've got our first two components in. I'm now going to create the bottom fascia. So exactly the same process, new part. And again, we're going to select the same slither face to put the part onto. Now, this component isn't finished until I've put the cut in the front of the fascia panel. Now I've got this pre-prepared in my design library, so I'm just going to drag it onto my part. So we'll drop that in there. So those two have been created very nice and quickly. Select new part, select a face on which to sketch on. The parts then mated onto that face uh, and the origins related to it. Now sometimes you don't want this mate uh, to be created and you want the origin of your part to represent the origin of your assembly. Now in that case we can do a new part and rather than actually selecting a face at this point where I've got the green tick, if I just hit the escape key it can brings me out of the command and puts my part with its origin the same place as the assembly origin. Um, and just fixes it in that location so there's no mates at all but the part can't move. What it doesn't do is put me in the edit component mode so I need to select the component, edit it and then start my extrude and it's going to ask me then what face I'm going to be sketching on. Now at times we don't want to make edits to something inside the assembly. Either there's a lot going on and we want to be able to concentrate on the individual component or we can't quite see the work we're trying to do. In which case, even though these are internal components as signified by the fact that it's part three within, that's what the little top hat means, in context cabinet, which is the name of the assembly, I can still right click on it and choose open part in the same way I can with any other part. Which makes it very easy for me to then grab hold of it and select the entities that are needed for my design library feature. And we're going to save that and close it and rebuild the assembly. We can see the changes have been brought in. Right, the next part I want to create, I'm going to create in the same method as the uh, the top panel. 
and what we're going to do is we're going to create the door. Now what we want with the door is we're going to want it to be based on the size of this aperture but we don't want it to be full size. So first of all I'm going to select the face I'm going to be sketching on which is the front face of the, uh, the shelf and then I'm going to put a rectangle in which is the aperture size. Now if I reselect all of that we can convert it into construction geometry and then offset it for the size of our door. Now in this case I'm going to offset it by 3mm so there's always going to be a 3mm gap around my door and we'll hit the tick there and we can then put the extrude in. Again I've got some uh, library features to drop onto the part. At this point it is worth being careful to make sure you select the door rather than the components around it for example. And there we've got our basic cupboard model. Now, seeing that's been very quick, at the moment all of my parts are saved within the assembly. Um, pros, there's only one file, so if I send some in the assembly file it will open completely. Cons, the assembly file is going to be a lot bigger because it's got all the file data for these parts. Now, one of the reasons we wanted it in context was so that we could resize it at will. So if I take this dimension, which is the distance of the side panel to the center, and I change it up, give it the model a rebuild, and all of my components resize to suit. So because they are defined as, for example, the shelf is defined as distance between this edge and this edge in its width, changing the width of the model changes the width of my parts, which makes it very easy to make edits from further on down the line. So if I now change my mind and decide, for example, the shelf, I want this to be an external component, I want a separate part file so I can send somebody that on its own, then first of all, we right click and rename the part, or you can press F2 or slow double click, rename it. Once it's renamed, right click on it and we get the option to save the part in an external file. The reason I rename it first is the file name that it's going to save as is the name of it in the assembly. The path it's going to save on by default is the same as the assembly but you can choose to specify it somewhere else. And then we're going to hit OK. Now if we come back over and look at the feature tree we can see shelf is now just shelf rather than shelf within in context cabinet. So this is now an external file, there's a separate part file in my folder doesn't stop it working in context though, uh, which is something to remember. So I can still change this size and my cabinet will rebuild and the sizes will be maintained. So we've now had or we've now created several parts where the size of the part is defined by the parts. What I'm going to do now is start creating some features that are defined by the parts and some features which are defined by features. So first of all I'm going to put a door handle in for my cabinet. So we'll take the door we'll choose to edit the component. I'm just going to put a simple extruded cut hole through it. It's going to go onto the front face of the door and we'll just put a circle in and it's going to be a 10 mil hole. Now what I want is for this circle to be, or the hole to be defined by the bottom of the cabinet. So it always stays the right sort of height up for me to grab hold of the door handle. And in this case, it is actually going to be 450 mil. So we'll create that. We're now in the cut extrude, and I can choose through all. Now, something important to note is because I'm in edit component mode, the through all only goes through the component I'm editing, not through the whole assembly, which does make my life a little bit easier in this case. So we've put our door hole through. So there we go. If I now change the gap between the shelves from 550 down to, say, 350, the door handle as opposed to being in the middle of the door will move right to the top of it. So that's a feature based on position of other parts. Now if I again open my door and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some holes in it which are going to be suitable for the hinge. So we're going to do a hole wizard hole, two 8mm holes towards the top of this uh, this door. And now what we're going to do is we're going to save this and go back to the assembly and put a cutout which is suitable for a hinge. 
so into this door panel here. If I just briefly make this transparent, we can see our holes there, so our hinge plate is going to go in this area here. So first of all, I want to edit that component, and at this point, everything else goes transparent. The transparency is an option uh, within SolidWorks. You can have things go transparent, you can have things disappear entirely, or have things not change at all. At this point, I've got transparency selected because it makes it clear when I'm in the edit component mode, and I can still see the bits, so I can select them. So it's going to be an extruded cut on that side face there. And we're just going to put it in. Now, I've decided that what I want is a 10 mil clearance all the way around my holes. And what I'm aiming for is for that 10 mil clearance to always be there regardless of where my holes end up. And we just want a 3 mil cut to remove that slither face. And there we go. Now, at the moment, I'm at 75 mil from the top. What I can do is reposition those holes significantly within the, uh, the hole feature. Say 200. And we can see the holes move off down here. When I exit and rebuild, you'll notice that the cut moves with them. So this is a really easy way to adjust the holes so we always know regardless of where I put the holes in my door my cutout's going to follow them so that is an example of a feature positioning itself based on another feature we've got some external components and we've got some internal components but all of them have this symbol on the end this arrow symbol which says that they have external references now we can check what the external references are by right click on them and choose list external references. So this is the external references for the door. First of all we've got the sketch plane because I clicked on the front of the shelf to start my extrude for the door. We've then got the top and bottom corners of the rectangle, this vertex up here and this vertex down here. And then finally we've got sketch 4 of cut extrude 3 which is my edge hole which links to the bottom edge of the side panel. Now potentially you might want to remove these references. There's a number of ways of doing this. First of all, you can choose lock all. It will give you a warning message saying that you can't add, in, add any new references while references are locked. I'm going to accept that. Now what happens is if I change the size of my cabinet, because those references are linked, the door won't resize. If I come back in, list external references of the door and unlock all, it will straight away rebuild. Sometimes if you don't want uh, items to be locked, you can choose to break them. Broken references uh, can never be rebuilt, uh, they can never be relinked again. Um, and you get a little symbol which is, uh, as opposed to just an arrow, you get an arrow with an X on the end to show that there were broken references. If you don't want to uh, break the references or lock the references, you can remove them. So for example, if I come into my fascia, edit the component, we'll go into the sketch, which has got some external references as we can see here and the external references on this part in the coincident top left and bottom right so if I select those and we'll delete them we've removed two of the external references now this part doesn't have any external references um, it still knows where it is because it was created with a mate onto the front face uh, we know where the sketch is going to be so for example if I went through the same process for the door or the top I wouldn't necessarily remove all my references because the sketch plane will have been the top face for example, of this cabinet for the, uh, the top, for example. We've got references in here. Um, we've removed our references from the bottom fascia. Now, some parts are mated in place. These two here, we can see the in-place mates for these items. Some other parts are not uh, mated, they're just fixed. So the lid, for example. Now, if I float the lid, and then drag it off to the side, it will move until I rebuild it. Now just before I do move it, I just want to show you where the origin is at the moment, center of the cabinet. If I drag this part, shift it off to the side, looks lovely. If I rebuild it, it pops back to where it became with. But the origin has moved. So it's just something to be aware of. If you've got items which are fixed in place 
and have in context relations. You can move them around in terms of the actual origin, so where the part file is, but because the red relations will pull it back to where it originally came, it will look like it's not moving. So sometimes that can be uh, where you get stuck. So in this model, we've had a look at creating uh, parts based on the positions and sizes of other parts. We've had a look at features relating to other parts and features relating to other features. We've also had a look at how to break references, remove references and lock references, how to save our internal files externally, and also a couple of things to be aware of, particularly with items that are floating. If I jump back to my other assembly, what we're going to have a look at now is a different method of using in-context uh, modeling techniques. Now this item is also in context, but it hasn't been built in quite the same way. What we've actually got at the back here is a driving sketch. Now this single sketch represents the door aperture, but all of my parts are mated to this sketch. So what happens is, although I've only got two dimensions, these control a lot of the positions and shapes of my parts, also based around the origin of the assembly. So if I change the 540 up to, say, 650, give it a rebuild, we'll see our cabinet gets wider, and all of my parts are based off the dimensions in this sketch. Likewise, if I take the 550 and make it 450, the door aperture gets smaller, the bottom fascia gets larger, and the shelves move around. So all of my parts are dri driven by this single sketch. And this is just another method of uh, in-context uh, assembly modelling. Thank you very much for watching.